This is Stacy McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast, where CEOs, senior leaders, and C-suite executives share their advice. It's six questions in nine minutes because the best leaders know how to share their ideas concisely and quickly. Let's jump right in. Question number one. In a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. Hi, Stacy. I'm Terry Rowenski. I'm uh, currently the CEO of Health Payment Systems here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, first and foremost, as I like to lead off, you know, first, I'm a husband, uh, father of four, granddad actually of two, which is an amazing thing, and a, a Christian business leader here in our community in, in southeastern Wisconsin. I've been a part of this, uh, this community and this culture of, of what we do here in the Midwest uh, for now going over 30 years since coming out of school, and I've been actually loving every minute of it. Wow, that's incredible. Well, I'm sure you have one or two things that you might have available to share with us today, huh? Yeah, yeah, very much so. <laughs> well, I'll be excited to hear that. So that kind of kicks me off into question in the, in the first real question, which is, what's the best thing about leading people from your perspective? You know, for, for me, it, it's really about, it's, it's advancement. I'll use that as a, as a really simple word, and, and it, it means many things. So, you know, advancement, first and foremost, for the individuals that I'm I'm blessed to steward over and coach. It's really, you know, skills, both hard and soft, you know, so just, just how to make them better business people and better tacticians or, or better logisticians, whatever the case happens to be. Um, the other part about advancement that I love seeing, you know, the folks, uh, you know, just mature in is, is really their, their position within an organization, uh, not just ordinal, but also just uh, leadership wise in terms of what they're doing and, and how they then kind of reap those rewards out of being able to be promoted or, or take different roles and different responsibilities. And, uh, and something that we believe in, in in my company and that we even wrote right into our core values is just that simple aspect of, of advancement through taking care of your fellow human, which strikes a lot of chords today, given everything that's going on around us. And, uh, and something that, that may be a little atypical is, frankly, I love it when people advance and they end up actually even leaving my organization because quite often they're leaving for a opportunity or role that I just don't have available to them. And they're getting a, a great advancement in their life, you know, for them and, and for their loved ones and those that they're supporting. And I just ask them as they leave our organization, if and when that takes place, that they just pay it forward. Uh, and that's really what I just love about leading people. That's amazing. Especially that last part about, you know, really encouraging them to go and, and be the steward of some of the philosophies and the takeaways that they've learned there um, yeah. is just so powerful. Well, that leads me to question number three, and you might get a kick out of this one, <laughs> is that sometimes from other leaders, I'll hear a phrase like, business would be great if it weren't for that pesky people part. I'm curious, what are your thoughts about that? Oh, golly. Uh, I would love to have an active debate with somebody about that uh, from an answer. I, I think from what I just said before, you can see I'm pretty much a, a 180 from that in terms yeah. of being very contrarian to that point of view. Um, you know, my career spans a lot of different industries, a, a lot of different disciplines from being a, a technician to a logistician to, uh, you know, somebody in the finance field now to being someone that's, that's stewarding over in an organization in its entirety. And in the end, no matter what it was, if we were manufacturing uh, paper plates that I was in, in one part of my career or moving freight around the world, yeah, we did software, we did great things with machinery and, and robotics and stuff, but in the end, it was the people side of it that made it rewarding. It's also the people side of it that made it frustrating at times. So maybe if a person has only had frustration as a part of working with others in their career, they would say that. But, but again, if, if, you, if you follow that adage of what we said before and you, you pour into people and you, you basically help raise the tide of a company or of a community by doing that, you can just see a lot of, of really great uh, rewards for yourself, not just for others in terms of what's going on. And, and that to me is really, really cool. That's awesome. So I'm curious, if you had a group of leaders sitting here in front of you right now, what piece of advice about communication would you give to them? Oh, golly. Um, you know, communication with compassion. Um, I, think, I think we all can use a little compassion in our lives. Uh, but the need for compassionate leadership today is, is much more apparent really during and after crises like we're in right now. Uh, you know, the, the world has changed so dramatically and radically over the past few months. Uh, business looks different, and that means that leadership looks different in, in how you communicate with others and what you do. Um, you know, we as leaders uh, at, at really all levels in an organization need to lead not just from a place of sympathy or, or empathy, but we really truly need to use compassion. 
it's not, it's not really enough to just recognize what others are experiencing, but you need to actively practice compassion by going out of your way to help others emotionally, mentally, and physically. And, uh, and for some, that might be really hard. You know, some leaders are not multifaceted that, that can do that. So what you need to be able to do in your organization or your social circle or whatever the construct is, is help find those individuals that can play to those strengths to help you have a better than team approach to how you lead and communicate with others, both inside of your organization and outside of your organization. And, and ultimately, you know, if, if you're working on how you can lead with passion and, and with purpose, um, you'll be engaging to others and, and by being engaging, then theoretically you'll have that better connection to your employees, to, to your, your customers, to your community. And, and that then leads to better trust and, and better execution and better results in the end. And I think just overall happiness, right? The more we're yeah. connected, you know, I think just the more happy and fulfilled we are. So I love that perspective. Yeah, truly. That's, that's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up. So Terry, what other successful business leaders like yourself should be on the podcast, right? Who else should we be paying attention to? Uh, you know, there, there's folks in my community, um, both past and present, and, and, and some folks outside of it as well. Um, uh, if you don't mind, I'll just, I'll just name a few. Uh, you know, you okay. know, one here right in our backyard is a gentleman by the name of Jalem Getz. Uh, he was a founder of a company that I worked for, an incredibly um, brilliant and, and tactical mind, but always innovating and, and just created, uh, have created a couple of companies from nothing and been incredibly successful at it. Um, a CFO that I had known at, at Kohl's department stores when I worked there, Arlene Meyer, um, she had taught me as an individual um, how to be ready with a spreadsheet uh, and how to use uh, Excel as one of my favorite business tools, but, but ultimately had really just taught me the, the preparedness and how to be ready for meetings and how to essentially have pre-meetings before meetings if you were selling difficult concepts. Um, there's really two more that I can think of. Uh, one is a gentleman by the name of Cole Brown. He is uh, here in, in the Wisconsin community, uh, leading a number of independent Christian-based schools as an executive director of those schools, and has really brought those schools from the point of where they almost closed to now thriving. And, and he's serving multiple communities within our community that we have. So, so people of different races and ethnicities, people of different of different uh, homes, home lives and things, and helping to just create great stewardship moments for these kids and their families and really bringing them both closer to, to God because they're, they're Christian based, but also just closer to one another so that you can go back to some of the other things we talked about in terms of team building and things. Uh, and then last, uh, you know, somebody that's more on a global scene is, is a gentleman by the name of Greg Maffei. So Greg is uh, a president and I think CEO now of, of Liberty Media. So he was part of a venture capital firm that I had worked for. And, uh, and Greg was the benefactor of my work with Arlene because Greg would be one of those folks that would put you on the spot and want you to solve something right there with numbers and facts. And, uh, and he helped actually craft me and just do a better tactician in terms of what I do and how I ask that of other people as well. All right, bring us home, Terry. Magic question number six. <laughs> Who's your favorite boss or teacher? Who's really influenced you? You know, two individuals in my life. Um, one was through education. And I'm glad it, it's actually uh, an or, I'm going to say really, and. Uh, so, so one was a gentleman that since has passed, uh, you know, Frank Gabler. He was a teacher in, in one of our schools in high school. And uh, if you can ever imagine you know, grabbing a, a young individual in a sophomore year, kind of by the scruff of the neck when, when you're not exactly doing what you should be doing, being educated, and kind of just saying to you, okay, son, why are you here? And what are you doing? And why are you taking my time and the time of others around you? If you're not going to put into it what you need to put into it, then don't be here. He, he kind of gave me one of those uh, you know, proverbial do X or get off the pot moments. Mm -hmm. And it really impacted my, my, the rest of my educational career because I never looked back after that. He just struck me to such a chord that a teacher would care enough to actually want me to be accountable, not just give up on me for not being the best me. That really just helped instill in me that, that aspect of teaching and leading other people. Um, and then my, my first career was with a, a gentleman named uh, Jim McHugh, who created a, a firm, again, out of nothing that I got to be you know, employee number 14 and, and was over 700 by the time I left. And just watching him lead with, with the, both compassion, but just the integrity of things that were going on in the industry that we were in at the time. Um, just really watching a, a leader that was unwavering in terms of support of his people and his customers and always able to find an outcome that was satisfying to both when times got tough. 
um, I admire those gentlemen a lot and, and try and you know, resemble myself after them at times as much as possible. Wow, that's so great. Thank you so much for, for sharing all these amazing insights. I mean, you know, I'm listening to you and thinking about, you know, um, how blessed to have so many wonderful people in your life to be able to, you know, hold you accountable and believe in you enough, right, to know that you can, right? People yeah, rise a little yeah. expect, but they stop where we tolerate. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and people raising the bar on me during my career. I mean, it's, it's a great thing. At times, you don't have that in life, and you can get higher heights when you do. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been an absolute delight having you. I'm curious if somebody wanted to reach out and introduce themselves or learn more, how might they go about that? Oh, sure. A couple ways. Uh, you can reach me through LinkedIn. Uh, you know, many people do, and it's a great platform for that. And I luckily am the only Terry Rowinski on that, which is great. <laughs> uh, so at least for now. For now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for now. And then uh, if folks want to just drop me an email, uh, they can just hit uh, trowenski at hps.md. And that's our uh, work address. And I'm reachable by that. 7 by 24 as well. That's fantastic. Well, again, Terry, thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Hopefully you'll come back and join us again for another segment. Um, and until then, this is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast. For more ideas and insights, please do go check us out at www.conciliateam.com. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care. Thank you.